Thanks everyone for joining in again today and joining your fellow DRE enthusiasts for a great day of talks and other programming about data reliability engineering. I'm Kyle Kerwin, co-founder and CEO at BigEye, and I'm excited to lead you through the second track of today's event. To kick us off, I'd like to welcome Harish Shrigari Raju, who is the principal engineer at Verizon. Uh, he has many years of experience in leveraging advanced analytics and machine learning for the improvement of software products. In today's session, he's going to talk about monitoring data, machine learning models, and performance from a personal cloud perspective. Make sure to drop any questions for Harish right here in the chat, and he'll be able to answer them for you live. Very excited to have you here today. Over to you, Harish. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Harish. I'm a principal engineer at Verizon. And for those of you who are not familiar, Verizon is one of the leading te telecom companies in the world. And within Verizon, my uh, role is focused on um, data management, uh, analytics, and also machine learning models. Uh, so today I'll be speaking about um, one of the core principles of data reliability engineering, which is monitoring. And, and so I'm going to share a um, few of the things that uh, I struggled with initially when I came on board uh, in my team at Verizon Cloud, um, and also share a few case studies and some best practices. So, so today I'll be speaking about, as I said, uh, monitoring data, AI models, and performance. So let's begin. Uh, before I, I start, I wanted to quickly highlight the agenda. So first, I would be covering what are the challenges typically faced by data teams? Uh, what are some of the monitoring approaches that uh, teams can start like uh, including as part of their data processes a few case studies that can also lead to some best practices and then lastly how do you uh, monitor ai models etc as well beyond just the underlying data so these are the common <clears throat> challenges i would say faced by data teams so the first is like clear definition of KPIs for from a product perspective. So because there are so many different uh, uh, metrics available uh, across the product, I think first step is really understanding like what are the core KPIs for a product. And I think this is always a struggle because uh, as the product evolves, new features are added, uh, new channels are added, the customers are also uh, customer segments are also evolving. So I think it's very important to clearly define KPIs for every year or every six months and, and revisit them. The second important challenge is like, okay, you have these KPIs, but like how are they performing against like targets you set out to do? Uh, so for these, I think you'll have to like actively monitor these KPIs and look at uh, targets. And sometimes I think teams struggle to define targets as well because um, people, first of all, they feel that these targets are out of their control, so they're hesitant to set a target, or sometimes the monitoring of data becomes tricky, so that's why uh, targets are difficult to um, uh, set as well beforehand. And, and the third piece is like real-time monitoring of data, which I'll be focusing on today more compared to the other problems um, that, that we'll be covering. Uh, so this, it involves like actually looking at like underlying data or KPIs or like machine learning models, but like ensuring that we are constantly like monitoring data in real time to be able to take corrective measures. Um, another uh, problem that uh, a lot of teams face is because there are like different data sources and sometimes data is replicated across different sources. Uh, so how do you bring all of this data? How do you integrate it? Uh, and integrating data becomes key because you want to be able to like stitch different data points to be able to uh, understand like a coherent story from the data or draw useful insights. Um, and, and the next problem uh, is identifying single source of data. As I said, sometimes uh, there are like multiple data sources oftentimes replicated and also different teams are looking at data. So I think really critical to identify what is the single source of uh, truth to monitor the quality of data or KPIs and so on. And lastly, there are a lot of these 
ad hoc reporting analytics requests that like are thrown at data teams and and so uh, i think the team always like struggles with understanding like which are more important requests how to how to create a system or a process around it so these are typically broadly the uh, challenges faced by data teams but again i'll be focusing a bit more on the real time monitoring which is one of the uh, core principles for data reliability so uh, let me take you through like a typical example data teams would face um, so someone who is like a product leader a will ask someone in uh, a data team b to get data on how engagement really impacts retention so any product typically we are always trying to strive for more engagement of user but sometimes the common question is how is this all this engagement translating into retention uh, so this is a standard question someone would ask from the product team now so the typical like example would be uh, of a process uh, where it's like chaotic is uh, b reaches out in this case b is a person from data team reaches out to like a business intelligence per, a team and then ask for a, a churn report or a retention report and then the bi team tries to <clears throat> come up with like a report but it doesn't pass a sniff test because there was an error uh, in, in that report generated now the bi team again tries to correct the error and, and then the bi team uh, also tries to provide like an updated file now b who is part of the data team tries to uh, manually pull all of this data from like another source which is usage data and then tries to stitch the data together but realizes that the uh, user ids or customer ids don't match between two different sources and lastly tries to create like a huge excel file pivot tables uh, and then realizes there are still like some critical data points missing and all of this effort takes about like 2 months uh, to bring up with this analysis uh, to product leaders by the time sometimes it's too late or you're not able to take the product leaders are not able to take uh, corrective actions or, or uh, understand the product better or create a roadmap so this is like a typical chaotic process and you must have seen some of these in your teams as well uh, now let's go to like an ideal situation so let's say all of this data is going into like one source which is like a single source of data everything is clean all the etl process is taken care of so in this scenario product leader a asks like a data team person b to get the data on again how engagement impacts retention uh, b can quickly open like a dashboard tool gets a report uh, uses some underlying analytics uh, analytical tools to analyze this data and then easily predicts or gives a report saying that higher engagement is actually leading to like retention uh, uh, and and they're seeing that by more than like 10% there is like a uh, impact of engagement to retention and all of this can like literally take like two hours so this would be like an ideal situation that we would all want to aspire for and and to get here very important thing is to monitor the quality of data in different sources uh, understand the single source of truth uh, integrate all these sources into like one dashboard and use tools to quickly analyze or clean up the data so these are so there are so many different steps to be able to get to this ideal state but it's important to keep this ideal state in mind which all of us should aspire for now if you see uh, one of the important things in the evolution cycle is to think about like accessibility of data first like before you'll have to let's say pull manual reports from different data sources after improvements you should be able to like automated um, generated reports like by connecting different sources through workflows and then consuming all this data in real time you can schedule jobs etc the second part is data cleanup once <laughs> Uh, once all the data is collected from different sources there's like manual process involved in the in the uh, ev first part of the evolution but let's say in the ideal state all the data transformation rules are defined easily automated through workflows and, and so you don't have to do any kind of clean up manually the last part is like monitoring uh, there's no 
la lack of like there is lack of monitoring or auditing of kpis and even underlying data so there's always a doubt in the mind of product leaders or data teams that what we are trying to analyze or uh, or generate reports are always uh, uh, there is like a question mark or this skepticism but let's say in the ideal state all this data is like valid uh, validated uh, both within like underlying data sources and and alerts are issued whenever there is a mismatch and so everyone knows that all the data issues are clearly highlighted and also fixed now now understanding that okay this is the ideal state which we discuss what can data teams do to like monitor uh, their underlying data what is uh, sort of like a platform that they can establish to be able to monitor the quality of data so the first step is to really evaluate like various data monitoring tools out there there are so many different like tools out there that <clears throat> allow for easy integration don't have to create these tools from scratch and so there are a lot of these saas tools available which can provide uh, data monitoring data labeling and so on but the important thing is to understand uh, how to compare different tools so first thing is like look and set up like how how much time does it take what is the effort required in setup but uh, not only in setup but like sometimes i think people forget the maintenance part as well some tools are harder to maintain versus other so not only set up focus on maintenance as well uh, and compliance because if it's a large company or even a mid sized company there are a lot of like compliances that come into picture and again based on industry as well let's say like healthcare telecom and so on so i think keeping that in mind as well and lastly the cost obviously like how how much is this tool uh, costing the company so i think based on these parameters think about like what are the tools out there for data monitoring and try to like start interacting with these um, uh, providers uh, service providers or or products to understand their value so once you have identified one of the tools the next step is like clearly define what are the rules and requirements so first thing is like connect various data sources but for each of the data sources clearly define what is the underlying data what are the <clears throat> deviations that are allowed for each of these underlying data sources and then also what are the rules that you can set up to identify if there is any mismatch uh, between what is expected and what is the actual data in the uh, data source and lastly uh, i think really important to set up automated processes so uh, provide like ongoing support to maintain any of the tools that you use and constantly you have to refine the rules let's say you set like initially certain rules you realize that there are some edge cases that you didn't think through before now you have to like constantly refine the rules as as you see more and more types of data different data and also uh, important aspect of this automation is setting it uh, setting up alerts so um, you want to be able to quickly trigger an alert to various data teams or or um, it teams in in this certain cases where uh, let's say there is any deviation from data quickly it is identified captured and everyone knows that there is like an issue that's captured here and then there are people uh, who set up processes to fix these but it's very important to set up these alerts in real time so that um, so that these issues are fixed at, at right at the beginning before it actually like escalates or or um, leads to like a bigger impact to the product so <clears throat> there are few other important considerations for monitoring apart from the ones we which we discussed the first thing is like <clears throat> access control like i think very important to see and monitor as well who is actually able to access this data uh, when you're setting up these tools or monitoring approaches is very again important to see that uh, access is also part of this monitoring um, and and constantly has to be tested that who are the specific people or teams that are able to access this confidential information and so you can set up like different levels of access uh based on um, based on the security clearance and so on uh this we already discussed alerts through auto email 
you have to clearly schedule like let's say emails or some other reports which can i uh, quickly identify any kind of deviation from underlying data rules or any kind of anomalies in kpis as well it's not just underlying data sometimes you you would want to see like any kind of like metric that shows like anomalies and you would want to like understand what is happening is it a product issue is it a customer issue or is it like fundamentally underlying data that is causing this issue next approach is also uh, set up like benchmarks so you can see actuals versus targets you can also set up like historical benchmarks as well like month on month comparison week on week or year on year comparisons so i think these are also very critical to understand if there are any anomalies or deviations uh, that you that will help you like easily detect there is an underlying problem and lastly i think there is always a scope for like advanced analytics uh for uh, understanding or uncovering certain metrics or user behavior and i think these kind of like analytics will be helpful for forecasting uh, clustering correlation and like you can use all of these to like detect anomalies again so very critical uh, to not only set up like uh, real time monitoring for underlying data but also for kpis and use advanced analytics as well i'll be covering a few case studies that i was able to use to uh, set up better monitoring systems for uh, looking at anomalies or issues with underlying data so so the first case study is, here is uh, i was able to set up a anomaly detection for deactivation so as you can see here i was able to uh, identify that if there is any spike in deactivations it triggers an alert and now this uh, anomaly can be because of like various factors uh, either because of a product issue or or uh, there are some errors server side errors or client side errors and so on but also it could be because of like underlying data in itself but i think really important to monitor these kind of things and setting up like robust processes um, and, and then ensuring that you are able to diagnose next of what is the fundamental reason for this anomaly so this is an important part of like monitoring as well which is not only for kpis but also for like underlying data the next as, uh, case study is uh, a sim very similar in terms of uh, deactivation so i was able to for example see that like day 7 leads uh, to like a higher churn and after that it pretty much stabilizes and this information can be actually used to run effective campaigns to increase conversion etc now the important thing is uh this actually helps to create like certain benchmark but because in future if you see day 14 or day 18 you actually see a higher detection of uh, uh churn you can actually maybe try to again further diagnose as to if there is a problem with the product channel or the customer segment or or is it again a fundamental underlying data issue so these kind of like analytics will help not only monitor kpis but also help in like diagnosis and then maybe also check the quality of data two other case studies uh, about uh, monitoring of kpis is the first one is uh, network analysis so what i was able to do was map out or chart the navigation patterns within uh, a particular mobile application and see what are the paths that uh, a user is taking so typically you can see a user let's say launches the app and goes to certain features plays around and then comes back and leaves the application but you can actually constantly monitor this kind of like a network diagram and then see if there is any deviation in terms of the path taken or users going to a dead end and so on so this again is like a very effective monitoring mechanism to see are there any deviations in terms of like standard uh ways of navigation and once you detect a deviation then you can again see if there is any problem with the, the app or user experience or are you actually facing any problem with the data uh collection or or cleaning itself and lastly another case study uh which is uh, understanding what are the users uh doing in terms of you know uh um, what are the core features that they are trying to use what is the satisfaction score and and based on that you can actually see who are the users who are most satisfied are they actually continuing to stay with the app or are they 
uh, uh, deactivating the app. So these are some of the ways, again, you can run a lot of correlations like against usage data, feature usage, app usage, engagement, and to actually compare it in terms of usage uh, with like certain uh, metrics or churn and retention as well. So these kind of <clears throat> correlations can actually help you to understand one, uh, is higher satisfaction leading to higher retention, for example. You can also see if, if that's not the case, is again, uh, any uh, the, are there any other challenges that the users are facing? Even if they're happy with the product, they're tending to deactivate. So maybe it's a pricing issue, for example. So these are some of the other approaches that one could take to uh, run advanced analytics, monitor KPIs. So, so initially we covered like setting up like basic monitoring systems. Then we looked at like certain case studies in terms of advanced analytics that can help uh, uh, monitor certain KPIs. Now let's look at lastly, what are the different uh, approaches to monitor AI models that uh, we've set up in a particular product. So the first thing is again, very core, which is important is check the fundamental underlying data. What is the uh, inputs that you're providing to this AI model and is the quality of data correct? The second important thing is constantly when you're improving the AI models, ensure that there is also ch checks and balances for the bias in the in the model or or are you trying to constantly uh, change the fundamental data underlying data as well so important to remove any kind of like bias from the system and and i think the best way to do it is um, one constantly auditing the models and and the underlying data then also checking uh, through human testing uh, and also sampling across a larger user base, you can constantly see, are you actually labeling the data correctly? Is the data cleaning happening correctly? And what are the models that are used? And is there any bias? So here, I think, unfortunately, you can't do rely on automated testing for some of these things. So that's why you need to do human testing through like a QA team internally, but also have like external user testing involved to be able to uh, test some of these AI models. So I'll just share uh, an example of how we were able to personalize the home screen um, uh, based on uh, an AI model. And then uh, what are some of the things or best practices that one could take? So first thing, as I said, uh, one here, when we're trying to personalize the home screen by ensuring that the features relevant to the user are shown to the user, first thing is to evaluate what are the fundamental factors that you're using to create an algorithm that is actually maybe ranking certain features or removing certain features from the home screen. And then think about what are the features that you're missing out? Uh, are you supposed to uh, use some other features uh, or factors that, that you're not currently using? So I think just understanding what are the inputs to the AI model. The second is what are the different biases the AI models uh, are creating. So here in this case, for example, uh, let's say if there are two fact, two different features and users tend to use both these features together, that might actually create another bias. And then you, you're not supposed to uh, look at them to, uh, to independently as two different features. So I think very important to uh, ensure that you remove this bias in this particular case, which is personalization of the home screen. Uh, and lastly, ensure that by through user testing, we were able to, for example, understand like what are the different features that they like and are they actually seeing those features on the home screen? Is it ranked in the order that they would prefer um, uh, based on their satisfaction, et cetera? So we were able to do some of this like user testing and, and, and see if the right features are showing up on the home screen. So these are some of the ways one could potentially uh, take on uh, in terms of best practices to also test and monitor AI models as well. So I would like to conclude this presentation by highlighting the fact that monitoring is very critical. Monitoring can, can mean a lot of different things. One is underlying data, it could be KPIs, and it could be AI models through user testing. And all of those are very fundamental to uh, data reliability and engineering uh, aspect of like product uh, uh, so, so I would urge all of you to think about these three different things. Think about all the ideal states 
that you would like and see what are the data systems that you could use um, today to actually get to that ideal state. Uh, thank you everyone for this opportunity and hope this was useful.